You need empathy. You need to understand that there is more going on in people's lives than what you see. Go dummy, go beast, oh no. I go beast. Go deep, I OG, oh no. What's up? It's your man B. Holmes back with another episode of Doors to Success. I'm your host, B. Holmes. I'm laying out the B print, which is where I teach you how to knock, open, and conquer the different doors and avenues of success in your life. We talk about spiritual, mental, emotional, social, and physical, and uh, which eventually, when you master those, leads to financial success, which is what most people are seeking, whether it be... Um, all different types of finances, all different types of gains in those different avenues, whether it's happiness or peace or, or that could be success, but that's what, that's what people are seeking. That's what we're wanting. So let me share with you a little secret. This one's going to be quick. Here's a little secret I've learned recently that, and I kind of spoke about this a few uh, podcasts ago, but I'm going to hit it again because it seems to be coming up that in society today, I think, and I've noticed that people have a desire to want to judge other people for the sheer fact that they feel that if they could point out someone else's faults or someone else's issues, that they won't have to take the burden on themselves anymore. Or that the spotlight won't be shining on them so bright. So I, it's been very interesting. So my wife, my love, is, is doing a, a fitness show. She's in a bikini competition. Shout out to my wife, my beautiful wife, Liz, at Miss Elizabeth W. Holmes on Instagram. Uh, go check her out. She's killing it. She's slaying the game. You want to see some smoking hot fire pics, go, go check her out. Um. But she's getting ready for this fitness show, and I've noticed that there have been people that have commented on her body, on her showing pictures in the bikinis or doing her walking, and I've gotten text messages and emails and all sorts of weird comments from people disapproving or hating on or giving me advice or sharing with me their thoughts and feelings on my wife's choices. And... um. Let me tell you something. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't. I really don't. My wife is making a decision to put herself out there for reasons that you will never know, for reasons that you don't have to know, that you may not approve of, that you may approve of, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to know them. These are her reasons. These are her reasons issues as a child. These are her, um, you know, generational, um, roadblocks and mental blocks and, and issues. These are her things that she is dealing with and she's dealing it with the best she can. And guess what? I'm going to give you the same. I'm going to give you the same love, the same respect, the same adoration and tell you that, Hey, I appreciate what you're doing. And I don't need to know why you're doing it. I don't need a reason. I don't need to hear your explanation. I trust that you're doing it for whatever reason you're doing it. And that's good enough for me. If you're doing it, I trust that you're doing it for you, for the right reasons. Now, why would somebody else feel the need to comment on a picture or a post or a video of my wife in a swimsuit for any reason? Any reason at all. Why would they post negative? And I've learned that it's because that person that makes the negative comment or the helpful comment, or I'm just trying to provide perspective, or I'm just trying to give you an opinion, or I'm just trying to stop. Whoever that person is and why you're doing it, I'm going to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach inside your soul, and I'm going to pull out the reason why you're doing it. You're doing it because somewhere, someone told you, that it wasn't okay to wear a bikini and to flaunt your body the way that you see her doing that. Someone told you somewhere that you shouldn't do it and that if you did do it, that you are not a good person. So you have ran this story your entire life 
so that you could feel justified in your decision to not live the life the way that you think you need to. Because when you do make those decisions, you actually find out that it's not that bad. Or more, or worse, that God doesn't love you. If my wife wears a bikini and she goes on stage and everyone can see her, then God won't love her the same. Let me ask you something. If you had a daughter or a granddaughter and you showed up to the pool and that granddaughter was in a bikini or a one piece, would you love that daughter any differently than the other? The answer is no, you wouldn't. And neither does God or Heavenly Father or the Savior or any God that's out there that you believe you pray to, that you worship. If, he, if you believe that he is your eternal father, guess what? He's going to love you the same. So what is it? What is it? Why are you doing it? Why do you feel the need to comment? Why do you feel the need to impose your opinion? Why do you scratch that? Why do you even get those feelings and thoughts in your heart to begin with? And I feel like it's because of what I said. I feel like if people feel like they could point out what other people are doing. Oh, oh, look at the bikini wear. Ooh, ooh, she's showing cleavage. Look, look, look at those cheeks. Oh my gosh. Two things. One, you're jealous. She looks phenomenal. She's enjoying the fruits of her labor. If you had any idea what she went through to look like that, Man, by all means, do whatever you want with that. If you had any idea what the effort was to do that, you can speak on it. And you know what's interesting? Other people that have done done shows, done fitness shows, or 100-mile marathons, or have done anything else that's taken that type of discipline, enjoys other people in different disciplines. The 100-mile marathon runners enjoy the bikini fitness people because they see the dedication and the commitment and what it took to get there. And they respect that. It's the people that haven't done that. Not one person that sent me any kind of negative, helpful information has done anything in that realm that would merit any kind of empathy. You need empathy. You need to understand that there is more going on in people's lives than what you see. You know it's true because it's happening to you. So stop taking snapshots of people's lives or posts of people's lives and making some snap judgment on why you would wear that swimsuit. Maybe, just maybe, if you put that swimsuit on and you did that little walk and twirl, the reason you have an issue with it is because you have the wrong intention with it. So you're assuming so does she. That's deep. So what happens, what happens is immediately you put up walls. And in society, we put these walls up. We hide behind these walls in any relationship. You put the wall up. You see someone doing something bad. You point at it. Ooh, 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 wall. You build the wall to protect your heart, protect yourself. Because if you were vulnerable, if you would be vulnerable with the truth of how you feel about it, if you would actually just say, you know what? She looks really good. And I wish after four kids, scoliosis, three surgeries, not just any old scoliosis. My wife had two ribs removed and she's got two rods that are a foot placed in her spine. You understand a little bit better now. You understand that from the time my wife was 14 to 18, she was in a, a full body cast. She never had one she never went on one date dance in high school. She never had anyone ask her out on a date. She never went on any kind of group thing. She never was the, the girl with the, had the, the, the popular boy in high school. To hear her speak about it is, is fascinating to me because when I met her, this, this in her mind or in her words, this, this ugly duckling had transformed into a swan and so, well, she just got her braces off and the, the, the back brace off and her teeth braces and, and uh, hit puberty and started wearing grown woman bras when I met her like the week before. And I was like, wow, she's amazing. She's gorgeous. Then I got to know her as a person and whoa, knocked me down. That was another one that I talked last time about dreams. That was another one I had a dream on. But if you want to be honest with it, 
right? If you want to have some empathy with it, if you want to realize what she's been through to get there and what she, and why she's doing it, then you'll understand. You you would applaud her. You would do anything you could to support her. And you would lower that wall that you're hiding behind, that you're protecting your heart behind. Because if you told the vulnerable truth, you're afraid that someone might make fun of you, someone might tease you, someone might do to you what you're doing to her or anyone, right? And in that thing, you do it first. I'm going to do it first. Even if it's guys under the, the, the premise of helpful bullshit, it's not. It's not helpful. Believe me, if you're thinking about it, we thought about it. Put that one on for size. Do you think me as, as the husband, the protective, loyal uh, husband, when I have my wife that looks like that and she's going to go on stage, you know, you know that there's going to be a bunch of guys looking. I know that. I know that. So do you think for one second I didn't think the thoughts you're thinking? Because I did. And you know what? It's, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. It's her being this 14-year-old girl, being told she's got to have this massive surgery and be in a, a full-body brace for years. She can't do gymnastics. She can't do cheerleading. She's going to miss out on being going through puberty with her friends and, and dating boys, and she's going to miss this. And she misses it. She never gets to do it. She's told that she's the smart one, not the pretty one. She believes her whole life that this is what it is. It's just facts. And after 15 years of, of counseling and soul searching and praying, 15 years of loving unconditionally, we, we have an answer to our prayers and meditation. And she gets to live this part of her life that she never lived. She never wore a bikini until she was 17. So maybe some of you had that. And maybe you're the ones that are hating. But this for her is like that moment in time she gets to capture. And you know what? Instead of me ruining it and saying something stupid or saying something rude or just trying to be helpful and being a realist and I'm going to help. No, I'm just going to be there supporting her because that's what I want. That's what I would need. And I'm going to be vulnerable. And luckily, she is my eternal queen. And, I, and I'm going to be around for eternity. And we're going to talk about this in the eons to come. And I'm going to look back and I'm going to be grateful that I handled it the way I did. And I didn't give her any helpful advice. But believe me, we've talked about it. Believe me, we've went through it. We've gone through it a few times. And and what we've discovered is that there has been a there's been a lot of healing in her realizing that she is powerful. She can control things in her life. She can manipulate the way her body looks. And we understand that some people can't. But now, after years of being pregnant and being in a culture that says you got to be pregnant and you got to live in the home and you got to do this and that and and even though that's not how I feel and that's not what I believe and, and we don't, maybe that's kind of what her cultural generational programming was. And so now all of our kids are in school. She's got some free time. So we stepped in and, and we, we partnered up and bought a gym and, and she wants to do this training thing and, and she's doing it and she's super disciplined. She's the most immaculately discipline down to the very decimal point person i know like this is a, a thing she can shine in she can do this she can she loves to pre-pack her food she loves to plan she loves to have a schedule like she was born to do this she was born for this moment and i hope she gets on stage and i hope she shows some sass i hope she shows some flair i hope she shows her personality i hope she nails her routine because she's exact and I hope more than anything that when she's done, she's going to look in the mirror and she's going to see what I've always seen the whole time. What Heavenly Father has seen the whole time. 
She is a gorgeous person outside and in. Inside and out. Always has been. Always will be. But maybe this is what she needed to break through the lies, the barriers, the stories, the agendas, the helpful conversations that didn't do anything for her as a 14-year-old. And I hope she liberates herself. It's going to be Miss Liz versus Elizabeth out there on that stage. And she's going to be triumphant because I know who she is and she's amazing. So I use that very vulnerable story because I want people to understand that you, you may have things in your life. You need to go find that show. You need to go find that bikini. Is, does that look like a form of a gummy? Does that look like the form of a shot? Does that look like the form of a going to a club? Does that look like the form of buying a car? Does that look like, uh, you know, retiring from your business or telling your boss to shove it? Does that look, what does that look like for you? I had an employee a couple weeks ago tell me to shove it. And I smiled and I gave him a hug and I was like, how'd that feel, man? I must have done something to hurt you and I'm so sorry. I had no, I have no idea what it is, but I bet that felt really good. <laughs> and we laughed and then he brought his wall down and we had a conversation and it was awesome. I'm like, man, we, we should have had this months ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. And usually the other person didn't know, but you do. And if you do put your wall down, assume the best assume the best case scenario assume that there was something that happened in her life that she has to do this or she wouldn't assume that anyone doing that thing that you don't approve of is needing to do it i'm going to take another example with with my my grandmother and my family my comanche family so having family from the reservation that and having native american Heritage, not just my grandma's Cherokee. And if she's Cherokee, it, call me. I'm just, <laughs> I mean, I've yet yet to meet meet a full meet, yet to meet a, a real Cherokee with a grandmother who was a princess. By the way, Cherokees never had any princesses. So whatever. People always, every time I talk about native culture, people always talk about alcoholism. And unless you've lived in the home and you know what that cycle looks like, I have a very short fuse for people who just make comments about Native Americans being drunk. Imagine, imagine that you and your family have a way of life. Imagine that you are living in your home. Imagine that... Let's go to Red Dawn, the, the movie. Imagine that China flies in. Imagine that they don't value the home and the car that you do. You love your cars. You, you like to go to McDonald's. Imagine that they blow up every McDonald's. They put you in their home and they take you outside and they dig a hole. And they make you live in the hole. It's a nice hole, but you live in the hole. It's got wood, and, but you don't like wood. You like a brick house, but they put you in the hole with, with wood. They take away your car and they give you a, a mule. It's a nice mule. It's a good, it, it will be good to move around because we don't got to drive McDonald's anymore. But you let me, so they take away your food source. They take away your transportation. And then they tell you, you can't worship spirituality. You cannot use anything to do. You can't do anything. You can't worship. You can't pray. You can't dance. You can't go to your temple or your church. You can't go anywhere. Imagine that that happened. And then, and then they show up with this drink that makes you feel and numb the pain. Oh, before the drink comes, sorry. They take away your kids. I almost forgot the best part. Then they take away your kids and they make them grow their hair long and they put a tattoo on their arm. And instead of being called, you know, Mike and, and Emily, they change their name to Ho Dong Shang and Zaida uh, Italqua, which are actually native names. How would you feel? And they didn't let them speak your language anymore. They changed their name. They changed their culture. They wouldn't let them speak the language. You can't worship and go to church. And they take your kids. 
all of a sudden, in five years, we're going to have a generational problem where we don't know how to parent because our kids are gone and our food is gone and our, 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 our it's all gone. And we're sad. Our, we are sad that our kids are gone. We don't have our kids anymore. Imagine our culture without kids. The laughter, the movies, the Disney, the, the fun things that are, you love your babies. They're gone. They had tattooed. They changed their name. They can't speak their language. And you're not their parents anymore. Then they bring you a drink that numbs everything. You, you won't take it at first. But it's the only thing they give you. Then they give you water with measles and polio in it. So then they tell you that if you mix the drink in your water, it will clean it, which was true. So they do that. And they realize they're numb. They realize they fill things again. They, can, they have spiritual experiences. If you've ever been drunk, you get turning into a prophet real quick. <laughs> and then they are. They turn into needing and relying on alcohol. Because it's the only thing that takes them out of the crap shithole that they're in. And then they get their kids sent back to them seven years later. Your beautiful little 10-year-old is now 17. Your 7-year-old that was nice and wanting to play bass with you is, is 15. Wants well, nothing to do with you. They've got long hair. They've got tattoos. They don't speak your language anymore. And they are a militant group. They were raised military. Some of them have lost their tongues. What do you, how do you feel about being a parent now? You let that happen? So then they take alcohol, more alcohol to numb that pain. And the kids, they never had parents. So now when that generation dies and the kids that were once taken away, the only parenting they saw was from the, school, the white schoolmasters or I keep getting my story mixed up now. I'm trying to make it relate then what they turn to alcohol and now you have a cycle a generational cycle that took away a culture and it wasn't just by happenstance it was planned food livelihood lifestyle religion you squash it they got nothing kids family generations it's over and that's what happened so before you make a comment about that Native American that's just drunk because you drive through Arizona and you see the reservation, bite your fucking tongue and think what I just told you. Imagine living in that household. Imagine watching your grandma be the youngest of a family that was torn apart. She doesn't know how to be a grandma. She doesn't, she doesn't know how to accept love. When that happens, all I can do is pass on her name and make sure she has a nice, nice ceremony when we buried her. But give some empathy. This world would be a better place if it had more empathy, and you assumed that that was the best that they were doing. I promise you now that you will never, ever make the wrong choice by assuming the best, by assuming empathy, by assuming that it may be worse than what you think, that giving the person the benefit of the doubt, you will never Choose wrong by doing that. You will be more happy, more better relationships, more understanding. M cleaner, clearer questions will be asked, seeking for understanding. And if you do that, you'll see that it's a big world. And maybe, just maybe, my wife on stage, there's a lot more to that than meets the eye. But dang, she looks good to the eye. So hopefully that gave you guys some perspective, made you think a little bit, a little heavy, I know, but let's make this place 
Let's make this world a better place. It's your man, Be Home, signing out. Doors to success. Let's go. Thank you for listening to the Doors to Success podcast. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more. Visit behomes.com for more information on how you can join the Bprint.